with Sean Brady. Let's talk to Colin McGorman, who's the director of Amnesty International Ireland. He was the founder of the charity One in Four. Colin, good afternoon to you. Good morning. To, uh, good afternoon, Jonathan. You heard Sh- um, Sean Brady there talk about regret. These visitators, as uh, they have been described in the report, talking about a great sense of pain and shame. Um, what do you make of what's been said? I should make it clear, first of all, Jonathan, that I'm talking very much in a personal capacity now and, and, and not as uh, uh, executive director of Amnesty International. I appreciate Amnesty that. clearly wouldn't have a position on this. Um, well, I have to say I was I was heartened to hear what Dermot Martin has to say because at least uh, he has the capacity to really nail the human truth at the heart of all of this. And, and I find him to be uh, a man of very considerable integrity. So I just want to say that off the bat. I find it difficult to uh, take seriously anything that John Brady has to say on this, frankly, given his, his own role in the Brendan Smith case and his failure to take appropriate responsibility for that. And I have to say, I mean, this, this seven-page document, this summary of, of this much uh, uh, promised and, and exalted uh, apostolic visitation to Ireland, uh, I, I think it's, it's, it's almost farcical, to be perfectly honest. I think it offers very little of any particular value. It says that the church should listen to victims of abuse, while the Vatican in particular seems unwilling, unable, and uh, um, uh, just completely intransient in doing so itself. It says some things that I find Uh, frankly quite staggering. It talks about how since the 1990s the Church has put guidelines in place. Um, We know the Church has been putting guidelines in place since the 1990s. In fact, it's put so many different versions of guidelines in place since the 1990s, at times it's it's hard to keep up with them. What it has resolutely for for the majority of that period, certainly up until the last two or three years, failed to do is to, to, to follow those guidelines or to respect them. It then goes on to say that efforts to put those guidelines in place and to follow them has been excellent. Mm completely ignoring, you know, a finding in 2008 that child protection practice in the Dice of Klein, for instance, was dangerous. Um, it yeah, then goes and, on. and we, well, we know what happened when yeah, the, when the yeah, Klein exactly. report came out. I mean, one of the points they make in this is that the church must listen to its victims. I mean, you, you know, what do you make of that? Well, I actually decided, I mean, many people, Andrew Madden, somebody I greatly admire and respect and like, I count him as a friend, felt that this visitation was pointless and he certainly wasn't going to engage with it. I was equally equally sceptical about what would come out of it, but I've, I believe that it's important to engage at every opportunity, no matter how difficult or challenging that might be. So I made it my business to, to via the Archdiocese of Dublin, contact Cardinal uh, um, Sean O'Malley, the, the Cardinal of uh, Boston, um, to suggest that I would meet with him. And I spent an hour with him in all, in all hollows. And I, I made it very clear to him what my view was. I, I said to him very clearly and very calmly, recounted my story because he wanted to hear that, but then said to him very clearly that from my perspective, the primary issue here was not the fact that abuse had happened, but the cover-up of those crimes, the willful, deliberate cover-up of those crimes by church authorities in Ireland and by the Vatican. I said that I believe the Vatican and this Pope and the previous Pope had deliberately and willfully deceived people, that they had lied about this fact, that they had failed to take responsibility for it. And I said to him very clearly that if I am wrong about this, please show me. Because I, if I am wrong about this, I want to be able to apologize for the things that I've said over these years. So please show me how I am wrong. Please bring this message back to Rome. Answer this question. Deal with this issue because it is, it is the only issue that matters at this stage. And I promised that I would shout my apologies from every rooftop even louder than, a, than any accusation or charge I've leveled against the Vatican up until this point. Nothing in this document deals with the Vatican's responsibility to address these issues uh, uh, in Ireland and globally. Uh, And, you know, this report comes out the day after. It's it's 10 years yesterday since soon the Pope aired on the BBC. That led to the resignation of Brendan Comiskey. It it allowed us to secure the Ferns inquiry, led on to the the Dublin Archdiocese inquiry, the Murphy report, etc. And today I read in in the Irish Independent and the, the British Telegraph newspaper that in the 1950s, in Holland, uh, victims of uh, abuse by priests who reported that abuse were, were detained in Catholic psychiatric institutions and subjected to surgical castration yeah. as a cure for their homosexuality. And then at the bottom of this report, I hear that it's that kind of orthodoxy, that kind of dogmatic rule from the top that the Catholic Church wants, wants to return back to, as if somehow the post-1960s liberalisation that happened across the world was the cause of abuse within the Catholic Church and we need to go back to the 1960s. You clearly feel, Colm, that meeting with Cardinal Sean O'Malley was a fruitless exercise now. 
I, I never believe that these conversations are fruitless, and I'd have it, I, I would have the same conversation again tomorrow, not for any personal reason, but because I believe we all have a responsibility to name truth where we're given an opportunity to do so. I'm particularly concerned and remain gravely concerned uh, that the Vatican has responsibility for the health, education and welfare of tens of millions of the most vulnerable children on this planet. But what they're saying is they're saying that the child protection in place in Ireland now it meets the standards that are required. So, I mean, could Ireland not perhaps lead the way in other countries? Well, Ireland could lead the way in other countries, but Ireland is under the very central and dogmatic rule of the Vatican. The Vatican leads the way across the global Catholic Church, and nowhere in this statement, and nowhere in any statement that the Vatican has ever made, has it acknowledged its responsibility for the cover-up of these crimes, for its failure to properly address these crimes, at any point. I mean, there is, there is no acknowledgement of Vatican responsibility here or anywhere uh, over the past 15 years, and that's the crucial issue. The Pope did say in that pastoral letter in 2010 where he announced that this was going to happen, he did express true sorrow. He said he openly expressed the shame and remorse that we all feel. Does That that obviously still doesn't go far enough. What do you, what do you want it's, the Vatican to do at this point? Really, it's really simply, Jonathan, what the, Vatican, what the Pope said in the pastoral letter that we, he, was truly, he was truly sorry for the suffering of victims. I'm truly sorry for the fact that human, sufferings happen, human suffering happens on a daily basis around the world, and I mean that most genuinely. I am. It's what drives me in the work that I do with Amnesty International. It's what drives me in the work that I do in every part of my life. So what, why, I wh- care about what happens to other people. Well, so why won't, they acknowledge, why won't they acknowledge it, what they did then? Because there's a big difference between ex- expressing sorrow or saying that you're truly so- sorry for the suffering of another and accepting responsibility for that fact. Of course, what I would imagine you regret these children. I have to say that I'm convinced that you regret more than anything else that that abuse has been uncovered and discovered because his institution uh, and his successor, and in many ways he himself, uh, has facilitated the cover-up of those crimes for many, many decades. All right, we'll leave it there. Colin McGorman, founder of One in Four. Uh, thank you very much for talking to us on News Talk Lunchtime. Patsy McGarry, a religious affairs correspondent.